Nottingham laughed even harder as he joined Mayor Hart and together they left the courtroom. The crowd of onlookers started to follow and Bluebeard rushed forward, shoving people out of his way. He grabbed Snow White by the wrist before she could leave. Sabrina couldn't hear what he was saying to her, but Miss White looked nervous and pale. Daphne noticed them talking too, as clearly did the jury member in the black hooded cloak. Though Sabrina could still not make out his face, he hovered on the edge of the crowd, obviously trying to listen to the villain and the beautiful teacher. What should we do? Daphne said. Don't worry, Bartow said. He took out his walkie-talkie and barked a couple of orders into it. A moment later, a better la- A battalion of little green trolls raced into the room, surrounded Bluebeard, and tackled him. Bluebeard felt the ground and swatted at them viciously, but there were too many for him to overpower. Taking advantage of this distraction, Snow snuck out of the courtroom, but not before she turned to the family and mouthed the words, Thank you. When she was safely gone, Sabrina turned to Bata, whose chest was puffed up with pride. I owe you one. The girl exclaimed, Just doing my job, Bartle said, though if you feel appropriate to mention this to Puck, I'd be most grateful I would. Now that the snow was gone, the juror in the black cloak had vanished as well. Sabrina turned her attention back to her grandmother, who was busy trying to reassure Robin and Little John. You're doing your best. Our best is not going to keep your friend alive, Little John grunted. I agree, Robin said. We're going to have to change our game plan. How so? Uncle Jake asked. If they won't let us question their witnesses in court, I think we should ask them questions outside of court, Robin said. If only we knew who some of the eyewitnesses were. Eyewitnesses? Sabrina asked. It was 600 years ago. Gray's face suddenly blanched. There's at least one eyewitness I know. Mom, Uncle Jake said, you don't mean... Oh, no, Daphne cried. Not the nutcase. Granny nodded. We need to go talk to Red Riding Hood. After her pet Jabberwocky had attacked the town, Red Riding Hood had been hospitalized in a mental health wing of the Fairport Landing Memorial Hospital. Even an irresponsible lunatic like the town's mayor, the Queen of Hearts, knew that Red Riding Hood was too dangerous to be allowed to roam free. Hart had consulted some witches who had put a magical barrier around Red's room and allowed the girl to receive doctors, nurses, and any visitors brave enough to come near her but prevented Red from leaving. Sabrina didn't have a lot of faith in the spell. Red had managed to escape a similar one before with disastrous results. When the group arrived, Sabrina sensed the jittery hospital staff, shared her nervousness. There were only a few people walking in Red's wing, but they all looked tired, with dark circles under their eyes and unkempt hair. The slightest noise sent a few nurses into hysterics. It didn't help matters that besides Red, the hospital was completely empty. Since most of the humans from Fairport Landing had been run out of town, there was no one who needed medical care. Ever afters never got sick, and when they were injured, they healed very fast without the need for bandages and prescriptions. Red's insane screams echoing down the lonely halls made the hospital very creepy. A nurse met them at the door. She looked exhausted. Deep lines had formed in the corners of her chubby mouth and her eyes were almost vacant, as if someone had turned the light off behind them. In addition, Sabrina had never seen a woman as fat as Nurse Spratt. She suspected the woman weighed upward of 800 pounds. She had also never seen a nurse eat a foot-long roast beef sandwich while she was on duty. The trial is quite popular this week, Nurse Spratt said between bites. You're her second group of visitors in the same amount of days. Bluebeard, Robin Hood said. Nurse Brett nodded. Creepy guy. He and Red are like two peas in a pod. He was in her room for hours asking questions. Do you hear what any of them were? Little John asked. 
No, truth is, I stay as far away from the patient as possible. She's what we are. We in the medical profession call a looty loop. We're aware of her troubles. What kind of treatment are you using on her? Drugs? Therapy? Counseling? Robin asked. Treatment? Nasper asked. She's completely off her rocker. There's no treatment for a brain like hers. Poor thing, the thing she'd see. I probably have a screw, a couple screws loose too. If I saw my grandmother get eaten, Nurse Brad let them down a long stair round hallway and stopped outside of a doorway that read "Medical Personnel Only." The door had a dozen heavy-duty locks and a metal bar across it. Obviously, the staff had as little faith in the various spell as Sabrina did. She's right in there, folks," the nurse said, and she went about unlocking the door. When she was finished, she opened it and stepped aside. "You're not going in with us?" Granny Rhoda asked. "No way!" She gives me the heebie-jeebies. But if I hear you screaming, I promise I'll come running. Thanks," Sabrina grumbled. "By the way," Nurse Brett said as she waddled back down the hall. "Keep your fingers in your pockets." She's a biter. Perhaps I should guard the door," Bottle said, as he peered into Red's room. Robin Hood led the group into a bright white room with prison bars on the windows. Crayons and colored pencils were scattered about. Many smashed underfoot and smeared on the room's marble floor. Thousands of drawings were taped to the walls, all depicting the same scene: a small house in the woods, surrounded by a mother, father. Grandmother, a dog, and a small girl in a red cloak. The mother was carrying a baby in her arms. Red Riding Hood sat at a tiny pink table, bolted to the, f- to the floor. She was having a tea party with several stuffed dolls. All the dolls were mangled and beaten. Most were missing their eyes, others legs and arms. Party guests! Red Riding Hood cried, clapping her hands and laughing. Please do have a seat. There's plenty of tea. Rhoda, if you'd like to ask the questions, feel free. Little John said, "I'm got nervously." Of course, Granny said. I've had some experience with Red. Yeah, like that time she tried to kidnap you and kill us. Sabrina said. Liebling, stay close to me. Granny said to the children. The group approached the table tentatively, like they were sneaking up on a gorilla. Granny Rhoda was the first to take a seat, followed by Daphne, Robin Hood, and then Little John. Sabrina was happy to stand. She felt she could keep a better eye on the deranged ever after if she were on her feet. It's a lovely party, Granny Rhoda said. Thank you, Rhoda, Red Riding Hood said as she gestured to an empty plate at the center of the table. Would you care for a cookie? My grandmother made them. Thank you," the old woman replied. She reached over and pretended to take one of the imaginary cookies. Robin and Little John did the same, while Red Riding Hood poured imaginary tea from a pot into everyone's cups. "Red, how are you feeling?" Granny asked. "They took my basket," the little girl said. "I need my basket. I have to take it to my grandmother's house. She is very ill." I'm sure they will give it back to you, Red. We were wondering if we could ask you some questions," Robin said, and pretended to take a sip of his tea. "I have questions," Red said. "So many questions. The people, the people in the white coats, won't answer them, though. They say it's all my imagination." Well, how about we play a little game? You can ask me a question, and I will try to answer it. And then I'll ask you a question, and you can do the same. Granny Rhoda said, "Games, I love games." Roger cried, "Me first." Very well. What is your question? Granny replied, as Robin Hood took a tape recorder from his briefcase and turned it on. "Where's my kitty?" Red asked. Granny looked at the girls for help. It was clear she didn't understand Red's question, but Sabrina knew all too well that what Red wanted to know. She was referring to the Jabberwocky she had used to terrorize the town. It was a nearly unstoppable killing machine with a thousand th- 
teeth, but to a red, it was a cuddly kitten. The family had used an enchanted sword known as the Vulpal Blade to kill it. She's talking about the Jabberwocky, Sabrina whispered. Granny's face flushed. Red, your kitty is sleeping. Sleeping? Yes, he went to sleep and he didn't wake up, Granny said. Oh, Red said and grew quiet. I love my kitty. Perhaps you could get a new one, Robin Hood said. A smaller one with less teeth, Sabrina replied. And one that doesn't breathe fire, Daphne added. Your turn, Red said, rebounding from her sadness. What can you tell us about the wolf? Robin asked. Red Riding Hood peered at him for a long time. It was obvious that she was confused, but Sabrina remembered what Red had once called Mr. Cairns. He means a doggy, Sabrina said. You remember the doggy, right? Oh, yes, the doggy, Red said. I love the doggy. Well, he could be bad. Bad? Very bad. He bit Grandma, Red said. We know, Granny Rogers said. We were wondering what you remember about the night he bit your grandma. The little girl sat quietly for a moment. Her eyes drifted off as if she was struggling to remember something dancing on the edges of her mind. Cages, she said softly and looked around the room. So many cages. Uncle Jake turned to Granny Rhoda. What cages? Granny shook her head. I've read nearly every version of the event and I've never seen any mention of cages. Red, can you tell us more about these cages? Robin Hood asked. No! The child shrieked. There was so much anger and hate in her voice, it startled even little John. He nearly fell over his chair as he tried to back away. It was my turn to answer a question, Red cried. You have to play the game right. Of course, my friend, Granny said in a calming voice. We didn't mean to skip your turn. Was your next question? Can I go home? Sabrina shuddered. Her fears seemed to be shared. The rest of the group seemed just as unnerved by the suggestion. Fairport Landing was on the verge of chaos already. The last thing it needed was Red walking around free. Eventually, Granny mustered the courage to answer. You're very sick and you need to get better. Once that happens, you can go home. I don't feel sick. I don't have a runny nose. That's because you are sick inside your mind. It's a different kind of illness. You can't feel it at all. Red frowned. Okay. Can we ask a question now? Granny asked. Red Riding Hood nodded. Tell us about these cages, Robin Hood said. The doggy was in one, and then there was wind, and then he wasn't in the cage anymore. The doggy wasn't in the doggy anymore. He was in the man, the man with the axe. He was an angry doggy. He made the other man scared. The other man cried. My turn. How is my baby brother? Granny searched the faces of the group for an answer, but everyone was silent. She turned back to the child. I didn't know you had a baby brother, Red. Oh, yes, Red cooed. He's got bright red hair, pink skin, and big green eyes. I just love him so much. Is someone taking care of him? Sabrina and Daphne looked at each other knowingly. They suspected that this baby brother of Red's wasn't really, really a relative, but a child she and the Jabberwocky had stolen. They had found a crib and baby toys in Red's, riding pla- Red's hiding place once, but who the child was or where he might be now was still a mystery. Yes, Granny lied, he's perfectly safe. Good, Red sighed. Your turn. You said that there was a man, your grand. That seems to be the end of this video. Um, uh, maybe the last one for the night too. Anyways. Come-